we are going to have a look at how to make this actually work in Flask. And for that, I need to switch to my other screen, and I will go to um, the, the challenge we have here is that we need to have a browser window as well. So I will open a browser window. Um, that uh, we can then use to actually have a look at that. So let's first just run this task, uh, exercise. So what, what we can actually do is we can also just start. So no, it, it didn't work. So my configuration is a little bit different and it wanted to install Flask uh, and certain things at the wrong level at an administrator level where it didn't have permission so I'll, I'll leave it at this but basically what you get at the start is basically almost like this so this uh so let me have a look so we can appearance we can go to presentation mode and hopefully that should come up and give you bigger screen so this particular part where we have the test that is not available or not by default it's the same thing with test.json so what you want to do is to, you, you first you have a number of static files that you have uh, so or, that you have so we can have uh, So, no, so this yes so if we look here we see our uh, our project folder and in this project folder we have these static files so and if you have a static file you just do stand static file html if you have your h your, your documents in a uh in a subfolder you can say okay maybe i want to do something like everything that is see uh so we might want to create a, a css file or uh so uh there's dot css and we might want to use this to say okay for the uh, yes a very very pretty uh style then we can go back to the application. We can then say, okay, app root uh, CSS slash uh, file. And then we can dev uh, send CSS. Uh, and then we need to have a file parameter, obviously. And yes, you can see that be because we didn't have that, it would actually warn us that this property does not exist. So one of the things you can, when you get this, yes, you can click on this, uh, this thing or press Alt Enter. So I normally use the keyboard shortcuts because that makes your programming life a lot faster. And so uh, in this particular case it's okay we can't really do any against it but it will still tell us what is the problem does not have a parameter file okay we want the file and then we return app dot send static file file let's see what this does so we run this We can, so in the run menu, so yes, I can get at it through a shortcut. Okay, I don't know where this short, this favorite stuff comes from. Okay, there is something going wrong here. Okay. Where, what is the error? Okay, URLs must start with a leading slash. Silly me. So we put that in there. 
and uh, that should oh yes oh reformat file we need so it will even get your style correct if you want to so now what we can do is we can go to the web browser um, and uh, open the oh sorry we first need to run the run run it again and it should hopefully also tell us where to listen to this so we can take this URL you can also click on it and open it in the browser and then what we do now is we open it in our browser window and then here we have hello world so if we want to do uh, We want to make this different that would work let's see if it automatically no so it doesn't uh it doesn't automatically reload it so we can now hopefully So now it's running again. So now we see hello application for programming principles. But we wanted to make sure that our CSS worked. So CSS slash test dot CSS. And we see our CSS file here having turned up. And we can also do so to test uh so if we have do something that doesn't exist it should give us an error so this is an easy way of getting all your css files hosted uh, or your javascript or you can have a, basically what you can do is okay this is static your starting page should normally live at the root so you need to do something special with that so you can also do okay if you get the root you can send a static file like test so this is my static file it's really boring i can add uh, a link to my, my my background and it will look really really uh, weird link to, and then we have age uh, rev equals css slash test.css well equals style sheet and this should just work so we now do test.html oh sorry oops yes now you should see the see the code if you give me a minute what i can do is try to inject in some uh, i will make a way that i can put both of them on or, or inject in the web browser so let me have a quick look and then i should also uh, um, uh, Now we make it a lot smaller. It's something like 
the top right. Okay, so. Hmm. That that doesn't work really. Uh, okay, so let us, I will just need to remember to switch. I think I'll do that. Just getting this set up now is a bit tricky. So anyway, we have this uh, this style file this way, and then we can. Uh, And then we can actually load the test page, uh, hopefully with the CSS file. So let's have a look at what this looks like. So I, I increase the size a little bit. So it lives in test.html. And this should reload immediately. Yes, we have our green file. So if, yes, we want to change this, we can do it. Nah. We can make it yellow, or we can even, it's a, it's a cool tool, we can even say, okay, actually, this color is really much better. So, uh, use the tools what they're good at, and now we reload, oh, ooh, sorry, so, yes. So, so, I will show you the tool. So, you, if you have this color here, you can actually click on the color, and say, okay, I want to have this, and then choose it, and... The editor can do H, uh, so, so web stuff. So, and this is what it then looks like. Well, it's probably cached. In, yes. When we look at our... Um, when we look at our thing, uh, you can see that it actually... We have this get stuff and it doesn't reload it properly so maybe if we tell uh so we use a hard reload yes then we get the change so you need to have a uh so with if you press the shift and the reload button it will reload it properly and it will not do this caching stuff because if you get a 300 something uh response that means that it's either a redirect or in this case a uh it's already in the cache you don't need to reload it uh response so yes and it also fav icon dot ico uh is basically what is used to so when we have this fav icon bit here this is used to put an icon on your uh on your web page so if you create that location that's where your browser will look for it but let's have a look, a, a little bit of a further look. So what we have thing is like this JSON data. So we can have JSON data where we put this information. So uh, so one of the ways that we can uh, so we can then say okay, rather than doing it this way, we can say okay, we want to get something like so we we can select this duplicate it so control d is a duplicate and we can say something like okay users slash username and then we have a username and of course that's a variable not a string and then we can have data that looks like this so if we then reload, because we have to reload it to basically have this new code. Oh, what is wrong here? It is complaining like crazy. So, ah, my users uh, get user. It's probably complaining that the name is duplicate. Yes. So, unfortunately, uh, it is sometimes hard to get your data. So, to to get make sense of these error messages, there's very little what we can do about this. So, what does this look like now in in a, in a web page? 
in the web page this basically looks uh, so we have our test page here we, so we have users slash uh, John and what it gives us now is this data structure what we can see also is that this data structure is uh, is reversed from our Python so if we look at Python we see this data structure here as being user and then user uh, and then the name obviously this name is just hard coded here but we could also have something like uh, users is uh, so we can have uh, Something like, so we can just make a dictionary uh, and then uh, say John is John Vinny. And then we can use that, so we to basically then say, okay name equal users username if it's none we can say we can do something like uh, turn missing user and we can do so And there should also be, but I haven't, I'm not that familiar with uh, Python, unfortunately, or with Flask, unfortunately. So, but there should be a way of, okay, we can not have these parentheses. And then we can just basically use the name here. And then we should be able to, after we rerun this again, we should be able to actually look use this to look up users so let's go back to the web page and now we have our users John and we get John Vinny we go something like Jane it says oh there is no such a key do not so the dictionary says it doesn't exist we should do this nice and prettier um so maybe put uh so we'll we'll fix this but let's first check that if i put paul in uh my username in there yes we get paul so how do we do this um how do we fix this well one of the ways that we can do this is well so we uh so what we can do is to check if uh if username in users that should hopefully work and then else then we can put this. Uh, so let's see if this works. And otherwise, we just have to do with uh, a try catch, and that also works. Uh, and it, uh, yes, two blank lines. So let's look at the web page now. It still works. And if I do the, put something else in there, it now tells us we have a missing user. So this is kind of how you can handle those things. You can have, you can set more properties. You can say uh, so when you look at uh, so you can see here basically if you have a, uh, something that you want to say. Okay, what is the 
uh, parameters available, you can press Ctrl P and it will give you the list of parameters. In this case, it is kind of a free for all these star star options. Maybe when we use Ctrl Q on this object, we can actually get the documentation. We see that it is fetching the documentation. There we are, it took a little bit. It's the first time I used that. So it will explain us um, how this works. So the, you're basically providing a rule and then options so that you can then, and this basically transforms the function. Uh, and we can even then go out and open this web page if we want to for further explanations. And we can see on the web page that it is now loading. So, and I clicked it a few times too often. So, this is how it works. So, we have a root. Uh, so, you can do things like okay. Um, to limit it to particular uh, methods, for example. It also is a good way of getting to your 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 to the, to look at how Flask works. So if we look at this documentation here, this is the API. We also have a lot of uh, examples. So there's a tutorial of how to to get started with this. So. These are all, for example, all the parameters that Flask has. And we can see that Flask basically, um, yeah, there's a lot of things that you can, can configure it. Like where does the templates folder live? What is the static folder? By default, it has good values, so you don't want to really do anything about that. And so we can have things like, okay, one of the things we might want to see is how, how do we do responses? Okay, let's have a look. How can we do responses? So, yes, it has session support. We uh, might want to actually use a uh, response so let's see if we can rather than do missing user we can have a We can should be able to handle a uh, your response. So let's have a look at that because uh, so when we look here, we can also just look at the user guide. That is probably the. Uh, the easiest way. So one of the things we want to do is handling errors in this case. So we can have a look at. So for, we you want to look at request data. So sometimes you might want to look at which particular um, data there is. So in your method you can. So you can have a method that has that checks. From your request, what is the method used? You can, um, uh, for example, use that to get our data. So what we might want to do is uh, put in a parameter for something. Um, you can have a CSS file that dynamically determines the color. We don't want to do that. And you need to be very careful with any user input that that doesn't uh, invalidate. So in the, our case, what we want to look at is how can we do these responses? So our responses is 
basically um, you can return a response object but in this case we, we might want to just do it in an easier way uh, so what we should be able to do is uh, use basically this approach and yes this is an error handler but we don't need to use that in and of itself so uh, one of the things it also does it automatically does this json of python python dictionaries you don't even need to do that manually but let's have a look if we can make our application do the return missing user in a nicer way if we put 404 there which is the uh the Python version or, or the HTTP version of not found. What does this look like? So let's rerun this. And see what happens now in our web page if we actually do this again. We should now be able to. see that this was actually passed along as an error when we use the inspector so you should be able to oh. developer tools should be able to tell us um, what is going on here and so yes we can see here it is that the the server says it didn't it didn't exist so we reload it again just for my or maybe we have poll we put this in and we should be able to find again yes it gave us a 404 so now we have the correct status message so that your other applications know that this is incorrect because as you know the text messages mean very little for your application on the javascript side but the status codes are very meaningful of course this is a very sparse way of giving uh, user information back so hopefully this helps you a little bit in how you can get flask going and how you can use the tool um so there's also things like handling file uploads very important if you have a po uh, if you have especially if you have a put request that is an upload and you might want to handle those kind of things there is cookie support there's a lot of supports for many many elements um, so you can set error handlers etc so have a look at this quick start as well and hopefully that helps you with getting going so